Hey sisters, welcome back to my channel. So a couple of months ago I moved into a new apartment and really wanted a custom looking dresser that I could use for my master bedroom and didn't have the hundreds of dollars it would take to buy one so I thought I would do a dresser DIY rehab and show you girls how I got the job done. So this was a dresser that I got for $80 from OfferUp. It's a lovely, well-constructed, solid wood dresser that just needed some updating. So the first step you want to do is to remove all of the pre-existing hardware. My top drawers had this ugly like felt green mat in it, so I had to use literally a hanger to remove it. But after I did that, I removed all the drawers and then uh, used a handheld vacuum to just clean it out. You can also use a rag or some sort of like tack cloth. The next step is to fill in the hardware holes with some wood filler and I will have detailed instructions on my blog, I'll leave that link below. The key here is to kind of overfill so that you have this dome shaped area that is perfectly even and smooth by the time you sand it all down. wanted to go with a gray dresser but I wasn't sure which shade and which tone so I got these pine side samples of paint from Lowe's, tested it and then found the appropriate one. After testing the paint it was time to sand. Now don't be fooled, sanding on this video is going to look super quick and super easy but I tell you it's the most labor intensive part of your project. I personally wanted to get down to the wood. This is my first time doing such a project and I wanted to see what it took and what it entails. I use a mouse detailer uh, sander by Black & Decker and I used four different grits of paper. I started with 50, then used 80, then 120, and then 220. Now this view here gives you a good sense of how much I took off. Not every single nook and cranny was covered, but a good amount was. In between each sanding, you do want to use a tack cloth to wipe down all the surfaces and get rid of all the saw particles, because otherwise if you have remnants remaining, you won't get that smooth professional finish. The next step is to tape off the dresser so we can get ready for priming. This part was actually fun, I didn't mind this part very much. You just want to plan and look carefully and see where do you want your paint to be. So you do that ahead of time and then you can easily decide on where you need to put the blue tape. bit overzealous when it came to the body of the dresser. You definitely don't have to tape the inner part like I did because you'll never see it, but I did, again, being overzealous. The next step was to prime the dresser and I used the Zinsser Bullseye 123 water-based primer. And it's such a great primer. Um, you get really great coverage just in one coat, like excellent, almost opaque. And uh, it really adheres, helps your paint adhere to your project. I used a um, smooth surface uh, roller. Uh, like knit roller to apply the bulk of it and then for detailed areas I use a nylon brush by Purdy. Again my whole goal is to get a very professional looking in piece so I did sand in between every single um, coat of primer and paint. I use a 220 grit sandpaper. You just want to lightly buff it so you get out the any irregularities that you may have. This next part may not be applicable for you, but when I bought the dresser, I had this little corner piece missing and I was really thinking how I was going to fill it in. So I went to Home Depot and I found this free wood sample, um, I think like their flooring samples which are free, and I measured how wide and long I needed the little piece to be. I took it to work and uh, cut that little piece out, sanded the edges, primed the little piece, literally used the glue gun and glued it in two points. You may notice you get these little balls of like primer rolling up and I think that's due to the adhesive that's in it So don't be alarmed. You just be sure to wipe down the dresser completely before 
for painting. Now it's time to get some satisfaction out of this project and paint the dresser. I used a paint by Olympic One. It's an enamel paint and the color gray that I used is called Elephant Skin. Now Olympic One is sold by at Lowe's and the color that I use is a color that's from Bear and it's sold at Home Depot's. The bare paint is kind of pricey, so I wanted to use it um, in a cheaper paint, but a quality one, which I found at Lowe's. Lowe's was able to dupe it for me, and I tested it out and loved it. And so um, just know that the color I use is a bare paint color, but any home improvement store can duplicate the color for you. I recommend using foam rollers to apply the paints. You could even use it for your primer. It really does give an excellent smooth finish. I used either a two inch or four inch roller. After allowing the first coat of paint to dry overnight, I lightly sanded the dresser with a 220 sanding sponge. I then applied a second coat of paint and repeated that entire process. So this project took me several weeks to complete. I think it took me almost eight weeks to complete just because there were some weeks I didn't do anything. So between the painting and applying the tape, I probably let it sit for about a week. And that's really good because it helps the paint fully cure. You probably don't need as long, but um, definitely leave it for at least 72 hours to fully cure. Now the next step was to tape off all the corners of the dresser so that I could paint the white trim. You want to be very diligent about how you apply your tape because after you apply this white paint, you want to minimize the amount of paint seepage you get underneath the blue tape. After all your blue painter's tape is applied, you can then begin to paint the trim. I chose a lovely white color um, in the same Olympic One paint. As you can see here, I'm actually using the sample paint first, and then I did get a gallon of the same paint as a backup. I really wanted the white to be very stark in appearance, so I did three coats of white, allowing each coat of white to dry overnight. After the last application dried, I gently fold off the painter's tape, and there I have the lovely drawers. I did have some areas where I did have some paint seepage, and on my blog you will find details on how I corrected this issue. I thought this piece would look great as a matte finish, so I used Farathane's Polyurethane in um, a matte finish, and it is a water-based top coat. It's really made for stained wood, but I saw a lot of other DIYers use it on painted furniture, so I thought I'd give it a try as well. For the drawers, I used my nylon pretty brush to apply, and for the body of the dresser, I used a 4-inch foam roller. Now this is a very thin uh, top coat, and so I had to use about 3 coats on my drawers and the body of the dresser, but the very top of it, I wanted it to be very durable as that's where a lot of items be placed, so I used four coats there. While I found sanding the project to be the most laborious part, I felt like drilling the holes for the new hardware was the most heart-wrenching because the piece was coming along so lovely and I just didn't want to mess up all the beautiful work I have put in thus far. But nonetheless, the hardware and the poles I got brand new from Home Depot, and I'll link everything in the description box. They were about $2.50 to $3 a piece. So as you can see, I don't really have a very scientific way of measuring where to drill the hole, so this is just my method. There are tools that you can do to measure exactly where you need to drill your holes, but I didn't really, really want to invest in such um, tools just for this little project. So what I did was I found the center of the dresser. I almost did like a stamping method where I outlined the screw holes, stamped it onto the dresser, outlined that again, make sure it was a really good match, and went to drilling. hardware that I use is called Liberty and on their website it tells you exactly what size drill bit to use for the corresponding screw size. After inserting your last piece of hardware, you are essentially done. Don't forget to remove the blue tape. I initially did because I was so excited and went back and had to remove all the blue tape, but it's such a fulfilling process. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am not a furniture rehabber, but if I can do it, you surely can. It is laborious, lots of steps, but it's so rewarding and to have a piece that I was able to create on a really good budget, something I would not have been able to afford in store. If you're wondering where it went, 
going to use in my apartment. It went to good use in our master bedroom. We used it as our TV stand slash dresser and we replaced those really ugly bins. So if you enjoyed watching this DIY dresser rehab, then please give me a thumbs up. And on that note, I'll see you guys in my next video. Be sure to add me on Snapchat because on Snapchat I had the entire process live as I was doing it and you'll keep up with me. And don't forget to check out the link to my blog post below which will have all the detailed instructions. And until the next one, bye guys.